Exactly. All righty. Three, two, one. So when somebody calls you or you run into someone, they usually say like, hi, how are you? And probably you respond with, I'm fine. How are you? And so today I want to talk about the word fine, why people shouldn't settle for fine when you can have fabulous. Now, I this was not my idea. It was my guest's idea. My guest and I today are going to talk about 10 things you can do to transform your life from fine to fabulous. And my guest is divorce and life coach, Michelle Heffron. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Jackie. Nice to see you. You too. And I love the article you wrote, Why Settle for Fine When You Can Have Fabulous. And I wanted to ask you how you came up with this idea. Like what made you think to write about this and talk about how people just always go, oh, I'm fine. And really sometimes we're not. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you say this because, you know, you hear this all the time and I, I say it all the time. I'm fine. And oh gosh, years ago, I watched this um, film called The Italian Job, which I love with Charlize Theron and Mark Wahlberg. And in, in dur during the, the film, she says something, I'm just fine. And he goes, well, you know what fine means? It means freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional fine. <laughs> and I thought, oh my gosh, that is so true. That's really what we're telling people when we say hey, we're just fine. Oh, we're fine. <laughs> right. Because I think many women do this. Most women I know, yeah. we feel like we have to be fine. We're not allowed to tell anybody anything otherwise. And we just have to fake it all the time. And do you agree with that? I so agree with that. And it wasn't until I went through my divorce um, nearly 15 years ago, and I started really paying attention to the words I was using only because I was I had been working with a coach trying to pull myself out of this like vortex of chaos and fineness. <laughs> and, and it wasn't fine in the finest way at all. And I realized that there's so much more to our life and that if we really, really, really thought about it, we could have a fabulous life, but it takes making a decision and choosing every single day not to just settle for fine. And settling for fine, or I should say not settling for fine takes courage. It takes getting out of your comfort zone. But I think we're going to get all in, we're going to get into all of this. But we're going to talk about 10 things you can do to transform your life from fine to fabulous, an article that Michelle wrote for Divorce Girl Smiling. You can find the article on divorcegirlsmiling.com. But before we talk about the 10 things, I want to tell my listeners a little bit about you, Michelle. So Michelle is a divorce coach, and a life strategist. And what I love about Michelle is she brings all of this experience. She served in executive leadership roles for a long, long time for a non for a nonprofit and went through two divorces, saw a coach herself, and now is just so dedicated to helping people who are trying to figure out what where their life is going and honestly to go from fine to fabulous. She's nodding in case you can't see. Her. Yes, thank you. Yes. All right. Okay. So let's get into the 10 things and I love I'm going to read part of this article cuz I love it. You wrote going from fine to fabulous is meant to be fun, fulfilling and all about you. This means putting you first. You may have been taught that putting yourself first in line is being selfish, self-centered and immoral. Who in life told you that? What did they base this unhelpful piece of unsolicited advice on? It's time to throw out old nonsense and step into your fabulousness. Oh my gosh. Great, great article. So I'm going to list each thing and then you explain how that can transform your life from fine to fabulous. The first one 
is self-love and you say it all starts with self-love. Tell me about that. It a hundred percent starts with self-love. If we don't love ourselves, how can we expect anyone else in our life to love us? And it is one of the biggest, gosh, misperceptions about, and as women that we do, we think we need to just give, 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 give to everybody else. And we never really focus in on what we're giving to ourselves. And only through giving to ourselves can we open ourselves up to the love that we really truly deserve and, and need in our life. And I, and self-love takes practice and it takes a commitment and there's a lot to it. And I think in my work, I do. Um, and I think many coaches really do help people find that path back to self-love in order for them to really blossom and get what they want in the world. And that is one of the very first steps to be stepping into your fabulousness. And I think that especially after divorce, self-love or during divorce, it's a really good time to examine how have I neglected my self-love and how can I get it back? Yes. And not just it's during and after, but really taking a hard look at what happened before and what do you not want to happen again? Because it's recognizing these things. It's not as that they're bad. It's that an indicator that something different needs to be done in your life. And, and thinking of it from that standpoint rather than, oh God, I really screwed up back there. And now, now what, you know, you're listening to the Divorced Girl Smiling Podcast. My name is Jackie Pillisoff, and I'm your host. Do you want to be fine or do you want to be fabulous? That's what we're talking about today. 10 things you can do to transform your life from fine to fabulous. My guest is divorce coach and life. Life. Why am I having a problem with this? Coach is fine. Just okay. <laughs> My guest is Michelle Heffron divorce and life coach. And we are going to take a short break. And when we come back, we have, let's see, nine more things that you can do to transform your life from fine to fabulous. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Divorce Girl Smiling Podcast. My name is Jackie Pillisoff, and I'm your host. Today, I am here with Michelle Heffron, divorce coach and life strategist. And Michelle and I are talking about the difference between being fine and fabulous. We are talking specifically 10 things you can do to transform your life from fine to fabulous. Moving on to number two. Okay, Michelle, before I read this, People are going to roll their eyes. So it's meditation. And I know that I used to roll my eyes and I'd be like, that doesn't help. But yes, it does. So tell my listeners why they should not roll their eyes. Well, and yeah, rolling their eyes is the first thing I usually get, um, unless you're a meditator. However, um, and I also get, well, I don't have time for that. And it's like, well, actually, you do have time for that. It's a choice. Everything in your life, and I mean everything in your life, is a choice. And so, if you don't have time for it and you made time for it, you'd have more time. You do. I mean, it's the most mm -hmm. transformational part of anything that I've actually included into my life. And um, and there's so many ways to meditate, but really being able to center and get back into your own self, and that's where it all happens. We have become this society of wanting everything on the outside of us always to change and honestly we can't change anything on the outside of us we can't control what anybody else is doing and until we kind of go within and get a little more centered in there and understanding who it is we are and what we really truly desire and that's through meditation and being very very quiet you you it, it changes your perspective on what you're seeing on the outside because you you can't change what's on the screen unless you change the film that's playing there. And so- Absolutely. That, and one thing you wrote about meditation was 
It's not like you have to devote an hour or two hours of your day. Michelle is talking about five minutes in the morning to let your mind be still, listen to whatever comes to you. And just, she says, as you continue to meditate gradually, you'll be able to, and you'll want to do it for a little bit longer, maybe 15 or 20 minutes. But we're talking about a small change that can truly change your life and really help you go from fine to fabulous. And, and I just cannot stress this one enough because it meditation can be so transformational if you allow it to be. And, and it can change things physically. It can change your mental health, your physical health, just so much around you and your perspective on life in general. Um, and you never know, you might really get hooked like I did. Um, and I've gone on to some meditation retreats that have been just amazing. And I'm so glad to have the experience. Now, I don't spend two hours every morning, uh, but I've done that. <laughs> and that is a, so it's nice. And it's just, it's just a little thing you can have in your pocket that will give you a better quality of life. All right, moving on to number three, another eye roller for a lot of people is gratitude. But let's talk about that and how that works into making your life better. Well, gratitude is misunderstood, I think, by some people, many people. It was by me when I first was told about gratitude. I was like, what am I going to be grateful for? Yeah, you know, but there is so much in our life, even if you wake up in the morning, you're laying in your bed and you start there and you just have gratitude that you're laying in this soft, comfortable bed and that you have, you're have, you warm and feeling good about life or whatever it is, or gratitude for even look around your own, just your, your living room and thinking about all the things that are in your existence that are there because you most likely wanted them there and somebody spent the time to design it and build it and you know put everything into place that you actually can enjoy that so gratitude about breathing i mean we don't we take for granted so much of our lives and when we start to think about how wonderful things are really not about all the bad things especially if you're going through a divorce it's really hard to find things to have gratitude about but when you do, um, you start. Yeah. To how does it change your life? How does it, how does that help? It, it helps you shift your mood oftentimes from being in a really crappy mood to going, you know what? I do have this. And when you have a better mood or a better positive outlook on anything or a better thought about anything, you're going to get a better result in life. And I agree because it, it, we all, right. Okay. Sorry. I just got so excited, yeah. but you're right because we all have problems going on all day, little issues. And then those go away and then we get new problems and we're worried about this and we're thinking about that and we get a bad email or we get a bill we didn't expect. And all that is always going to be there. And when you have gratitude and you think about these basic things it, I do think that you just get to this place where you're like, eh, the bill's not so important. Okay, so what? It's solvable. Yes. And, um, oh, I lost my train of thought on that. But I'm even, sorry, because I interrupted you. No, but it is one of those things that, um, oh, gosh. But even, you know, now, and this is many years later, and I know that this is a lot for people who might be going through divorce, but- I look back on all the things that happened, which was really sh sh crappy. My, it was not a very pleasant. You can say shitty. Okay, it was shitty. <laughs> I'm just going to be right out there and tell you it was not. I was, I was not in a very good place when I was going through my divorce many years ago. But now I actually do look back at it, and I am grateful because I wouldn't have grown and evolved into who I am now, had I not had that really shitty experience. And so it's really being able to also look at what's really happening in your life. And everything to me now is like an indicator when you get into an uncomfortable situation, or maybe you get sick or something, and you're, something it's always a sign that something else needs to be shifted 
and that there's a course correction that needs to happen. And I just feel like gratitude is that basis for understanding that there's more going on in our lives than we think, and you're not in control of everything. So have some grace and gratitude for where you are and just see what happens because really cool things happen then. I have a great exercise for people listening. Michelle, you're going to be so proud of me. I want to tell everyone what I did this morning. So I woke up and I was like, you know, thinking about all these problems that I was having. And then I went to take my dog out. And then I thought to myself, okay, let's do a gratitude exercise. And I go, the five senses. So I looked around and I live in a beautiful neighborhood. I was looking at all the trees and flowers and I was like, okay, that's my vision, beautiful. And then I was like, okay, hearing. And I was listening to the birds chirping. It was like six o'clock in the morning and it was so nice. I was like, oh, they're so cute. Okay, then I like had to do something and I touched my dog and I was like, okay, touch. I love this animal so much. And then I was like, okay, smell. And so I was like, I could actually smell flowers. And then when I got inside, I was like, well, I didn't do anything for taste. I took that first sip of coffee and I was like, wow, that tastes so good. Isn't that a good one? It is. And those are just, they're small things, but doesn't it shift the way your morning starts? Completely. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to number four. Rewrite your story. That's how you go. That's one of the ways to go from fine to fabulous. Tell me about that. Well, this is a very, very big one. And I I do a lot on this whole theme in the writings that I do because, you know, if you want, your story is your story, but it's also your story from your perspective. And if you are creating yourself as the victim in your story, then you're going to continue to be a victim in every other part of your life. So it's, it's changing your story to a different perspective. And because you can tell everybody your story and I guarantee if you tell more of the victim end of your story, you're going to get more things that are going to put you into that victim space. So rather than be a victim, be a heroine in your own story and just twist, turn the story around. How has it been good for you? One of my coaches, and it's, this is an excruciating exercise, I must say, but when things aren't going well, she'll have us write out, I want 10 reasons why this is good because this is happening. This is good because. And it's hard to find this is good because sometimes when things are really well, right. Down, if you're getting a divorce, how do you find this is good because? Yeah, but well, I know how you're going to answer it. Go ahead. Well, this is what good would you for- write if you were like newly separated? Oh well, this is good because I get to see who I am now. This is good because I never liked the wallpaper in our bedroom, and now I get to do anything. Something. Yes. This is good because I couldn't stand having to make dinner for that jerk every night. Whatever it is, right. maybe that, that that sounds a little negative. I like this, to- and yeah, and and like this is good because I'm getting out of this toxicity. This is good because he didn't treat me the way I deserve to be treated. Well, this and is good. Go ahead. Exactly to say this is good because now I get to create the life that I've meant to have. It. Rather than looking at it as a really crappy thing in your life, it's about what what do you get to do now that you didn't do then? And you know, there it's it's very it can shift your perspective totally. Right. But then the other thing is that you can't go back and change the story that happened, maybe, but you can start a new phase and, and really, really create the story that you do want. And that's like what I do. And even with my coaching clients, you, you create a vision for what you want your life to look like. And then we, we build a roadmap to get to that, because if you don't know where you want to go, they're going to get more of the same of what you got. So let's change the picture. 
And it doesn't happen at the beginning either. Like this takes time. We're, we don't expect you to go see Michelle for a consult and start mapping out what your new story when your husband just walked out on you a week ago. No. You need to grieve and mourn that and be angry and go through all of those emotions. What we're talking about is ending up happy after that mourning process is over. And it's also about how do you move through that process more efficiently? Because as you're going through it, because I agree with you, I mean, you know what? Anger needs to come out someplace. Otherwise, it's going to manifest someplace else. It's being careful about where that anger does come out and being conscious of that and placing that where it needs to be placed rather than you know, towards the poor clerk at the Starbucks or something. Right. <laughs> And then also not to hang on to it for too long. You know, exactly. we all know those bitter, angry people who are still talking about their divorce 10 years later. Well, rehashing it over and over right. and over with their friends and family, it just drives me nuts. It's like, okay, all right. I and have it. to make a snide comment every minute when it's been 10 years. Right. It, it just, right. It, it All right, just, let's move on because we're kind of running yeah. out of time. Okay. Number five, here's another eye roller. Move your body. And before you even explain this, Michelle, I want to tell the listeners, we're not saying if you want to go from fine to fabulous that you have to lose 20 pounds, you have to have this perfect body. That's not what this is. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Michelle. Not at all. It just means about going out to what feels good to you, but to do something to activate the physical in your life that you might not be doing. Um, and it makes a big difference to find something else outside of your normal thing that you do. I think I mentioned in there, one of my um, friends who went through a divorce, she was really looking for something different to do. And she went out and she started doing salsa dancing, Argentinian salsa dancing. And I actually just had her on my podcast. And um, now she's hooked. And that's led her into this whole other thing. Now she takes trips to Buenos Aires and to Spain to do this. And you doing something different that's outside of your norm. And I know these are small little things and these are kind of the things that, you know, come up all the time, but this is a really good place to start to get out and move. You'll feel so much better about who you are and what you're being and just showing up differently than 100%. if you stayed, you know, sitting on, on your couch watching yeah. Netflix series. Exactly. But, but not that that's a bad thing. There's a time and place. But what I was going to say is, can you imagine all the friends and connections this woman has probably made from her salsa dancing? Now she yeah. has a whole new community. And everywhere. I mean, now she's going to places all over the place. Mm -hmm. And it is this community. And so even I found that with the pickleball thing, anything, it's not even that you have to take a class, go out for a nature walk, breathe fresh air, and do something to get yourself out of your norm and into something new and different and just see what else is possible. I love it. All right. Next one is celebrate. So people are probably listening going, well, how am I expected to celebrate? I just got to, I'm going through the worst divorce. What do you sure. mean by celebrate? Sure. But you know, every time you have a little win, even, even if you decided you want to start moving your body and you did it for 10 days in a row, give yourself some grace and celebrate that in some way. Um, I also think it's very important that when you kind of set benchmarks for yourself, maybe, maybe you're going through the divorce and you had to get some documents to your attorney that really were taking a long time and you gave yourself this deadline, when you get to it and you, you accomplished it, do a little something for yourself, go buy yourself a new scented candle or a new outfit, whatever works in your budget, but do something that's celebrating you. I used to do this with my kids because I went through this divorce and I had no money. I didn't know what in the world was going to happen. So I decided early on that, and we, we liked champagne. I'm just going to say <laughs> and, and I mean, so I would always find some way to keep a couple of bottles of champagne. And any time we had something that we could celebrate, we popped open a bottle of champagne and we did a little toast and we celebrated. And that was a tradition that morphed into our Christmases and all kinds of things. And it's not that we were sitting around drinking champagne all the time. 
<laughs> not a bad idea if you know but it no, was I know fact, what you mean that's such a cute tradition it was you know mm -hmm. and the kids they I keep the champagne glasses in the freezer so they're cold and my daughter barely even has a sip anymore but it's a still a tradition that when we do things we celebrate and but you get to make up whatever you get to come up with your own celebration. And I like to call them little victories. So, yeah. you know, you're getting divorced. And when I got divorced, I had zero self-esteem. I was a stay at home mom. I felt frumpy and old and I had no self-worth. Right. And so then little victories started happening. You know, I realized I'm capable of fixing my toilet. That was a victory for me. That is. I'm capable of taking the garbage out every week and never forgetting. I started to, little tiny things precipitated self-love because I kept saying, wow, I can do this. Well, if I did this, well, now what's the next level? Yeah. Well, now I need a job. Went back and got a job. Big victory there. That was a big celebration for me when I got that first job. It was big. Love it. Yeah. All right, yeah. moving on. We have a couple more. I'm going to combine bubbles and bath and pampering yourself into one. Perfect. Um, I, I do this, especially for people who, you know, we don't have all the time in the world. We don't, maybe we, we, we can't afford to go to the spa, what, whatever it is, do something small and bubbles and bath to me is just like one of those luxury things. You can light a candle you can, you can have a cup of tea or, you know, a bubbles, bubblies or something and really just take yourself away and give yourself time. And sometimes I even meditate in the bathtub if I need to consolidate, you know, different things, not that I'm checking everything off a list, but it is a relaxing place. And I know that moms who have little kids sometimes can't do this, but it is something if you could just carve out a little time to pamper yourself, buy yourself a little gift, take a relaxing bubble bath, whatever it is, just get away from your norm. So you're not rushing through your life all the time. Life is meant to be loved, lived and enjoyed with pleasure. And if all we're doing is checking things off a list and running through our day, we're not living, we're just surviving. And it's not about survival. It's about thriving in life. You know, I just had a guy say to me recently, like, why do women get their nails done? I mean, I don't see what the big deal is. And I said, you know what the big deal is? Because when we get our nails done, we look down at our nails for the next week and we think like, wow, that looks nice. That looks manicured. That makes people think I care about myself. That makes me think I care about myself. And if you can't find the time or the 18 bucks to go get your nails done once every once in a while, then you're missing out. That, and I, I'm big on this is getting, go get a haircut, get yourself you know, do something that makes you feel like when you look in the mirror that you've taken care of yourself, because it's so easy, especially if you're going through a divorce, <laughs> to just let it go and not care. And that's not the time you want to do that. It's not because you're doing it for anybody else. You're doing it for you. And I remember that the pampering thing, I did have a coach one time who really, every time I made a big, big accomplishment. I went out and got myself something. I still, I have a favorite pair of pajamas. It was a huge stretch for me to be able to afford these pajamas, but it meant so much to me to buy those for myself after I had um, achieved one of my benchmarks that I'll never want to get rid of them just because it has this memory of how I overcame some different things when I was going through my divorce that helped me and I remember that. It means something to me. I love it. Michelle, this has been so wonderful. Thank you so much for taking time and doing this today. I love this conversation. Thank you, Jackie. This is, as always, very, very fun. I appreciate this time for sure. And if you are interested in having a consult or working with Michelle, you can find her at her website, which is Michelle with one L. Hefron with two Fs dot com. 
You can also find Michelle in the trusted professional section of Divorce Girl Smiling, along with so many other wonderful, trusted, vetted divorce professionals like mortgage lenders, real estate agents, financial advisors, divorce lawyers, mediators, and more. I want to end this by reading Michelle's article, just one sentence from it. She says, let's take a stand against being, doing, and having fine in our lives, and let's strive for fabulous. This is you want, oh, okay, sorry. This is your one and only life here on this spinning globe of possibilities, and you deserve fabulous relationships, fabulous careers, fabulous finances, and fabulous freedom. Michelle, I love that. You. Thanks again for being on the show. And to my listeners, if you want to read any articles, if you want to listen to my podcast, okay, I'm starting that over. And to my listeners, if you want to listen to more podcasts, read articles, download my mobile app, or sign up for my free consult, come see me at divorcedgirlsmiling.com. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. We'll talk to you real soon.